All right. You guys have asked and I have delivered. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at my mobile home assistant dashboard and how to get it set up on your guys' home assistant instance as well. Let's get this going. What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss when I post new content. Now today, we're gonna to be taking a look at my mobile home assistant dashboard. I did a video like this for my wall-mounted tablet dashboard a couple of months ago, and there was an insanely positive response to that video with a bunch of people just saying how great it looked and all that stuff, so thank you guys so much for all of the positive feedback on that video. But a couple of people also wanted to see how I set up my mobile home assistant dashboard, which I showed in another video that I did about a month ago explaining kind of how to get started with home assistant. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to be showing you guys how it's set up on my phone and how to get it going on your guys' home assistant instance as well. All right, so here we got the dashboard itself. Now, this dashboard is very, very heavily based off of Leon's rounded design, which looked incredible. And when I implemented this one, I just figured, yeah, this is going to be the one that I'm going to be sticking with for quite a while. I went through like four mobile home assistant dashboards before I settled on this one. But yeah, as you can see, it's a super modern and super sleek design, which I really, really like about it. I feel like a lot of other home assistant dashboards, they, they just all kind of look basic and they all kind of look the same. This one, on the other hand, it's kind of a different color palette. The cards are just really, really nicely laid out. And yeah, I'm just a big fan of this dashboard. So right here on the main page, this is where I'm going to go for kind of my everyday controls, things that I need to be able to access quickly and easily. So as you can see here, I've got some scene buttons, light controls, master brightness and master temperature controls, curtain controls, ceiling fan controls, device controls, just all the controls. And then I've also got some input helper status button cards down here as well. And then next up on the security tab, I can control my security system, see the history of the motion sensor in this room, see out of my wall tablet's camera, which sometimes works, sometimes does not, and then also see the status of the contact sensors in this room as well. All right, so next up on this screen, I've got some controls for my HomePod and media playback. Now, as you can see, it's currently off and nothing's playing, but we can tap here to turn it on. We can hit play to start playing music. We can seek between tracks with these buttons right here. And then I've also got some volume controls, stop controls, and then we can turn it back off by hitting the power off button. And then next up on the system status screen, pretty self-explanatory, but I've just got a bunch of system stats that I may need to access at some point in time. And then finally on the configuration page, as you guys can see, I've got a couple of cards telling me if there are any updates available on my home assistant instance. And this is really useful because I feel like a lot of times updates can kind of just go unnoticed and they can sit there for weeks and weeks without you noticing them until finally you realize, oh shoot, I'm like six updates behind. However, with a card on your dashboard, you're a lot less likely to miss them. And if we click on one of these, we can instantly install the update by hitting the install button. And then down here, I've got some controls for various input booleans across my system. Again, it's super useful to not have to go into settings to access those. They're just right here on my dashboard. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So now we've taken a look at the dashboard. I know what y'all are thinking. You want to know, how the heck do I install this thing? So you know what? That's what we're going to do right now. Let's get on with the installation. All right, so the first thing that you're going to want to do is, as usual, head on over to the GitHub page for this dashboard. I've got links to everything that you're going to need to download in the description below. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is find the weather icons folder up here, click that, and then download each of these weather icons. These are what are going to be used to create the weather card on the main page so this card right here and obviously if you don't download these the card will not be able to find these files and you'll just get a blank icon which nobody wants now for some odd reason github does not let you download entire folders with the files at the same time you have to download each of the individual files by themselves so it can be a little bit time consuming to download all of these but hopefully it shouldn't be too bad and if any of you guys do know a way to download entire folders off of github please let me know down in the comments because i would like to know how to do that so for each one of these weather icons, you're going to click on the name of the icon and then click on the download raw file right here. It'll go into your downloads folder and then you're going to want to do this for each of the icons. All right, so now that we got those icons downloaded, let's head over to your home assistant instance, go to the file editor and then find the www folder at the bottom of the file directory. And then inside of that folder, create a new folder called weather icons. Now. Again, I obviously already have a folder like this with all of the icons inside of them, but basically what you're going to want to do is create this folder called weather underscore icons, and then for each of those icons that you just downloaded, choose upload file, 
click on the file button and then choose the file from your computer. Again, it is a little bit time consuming, I know, but for some reason, GitHub and File Editor will not let you upload entire folders worth of stuff, which is kind of annoying. It is also worth mentioning that if you have your instance accessible over your local network via SambaShare, you can also do this through the Finder on Mac or through File Explorer if you're on Windows, which can be a little bit easier because you don't have to individually upload each of the files to File Editor. But for the purposes of today's video, I will be sticking with File Editor because that's just easier to get set up. All right, so now that we got our icons, let's import the theme file. So again, this process is gonna be very similar to what we did in my previous wall mount and tablet dashboard videos. So you're gonna choose the rounded.yaml file, open that, choose copy raw file. Back in Home Assistant, scroll down and find the themes folder. If you don't already have it, just make a folder called themes, all lowercase. And then inside of that folder, create a new file. And then inside that folder, create a new file called rounded.yaml. And then choose OK to create the file. Open the new file and then paste in the code that we just copied from GitHub. And then make sure everything got pasted in and then choose save. Next up, head into developer tools, go to services, and then search for the reload themes service and then choose call service. And then now if you head into your profile, you should be able to find the new rounded theme available for us to use. You can just click that to apply it. And then now let's go ahead and grab the actual dashboard. All right, back in GitHub, find the mobile dash redacted master YAML file. Now that's a bit of a mouthful, but just bear with me. And we're gonna use the exact same procedure that we did for the theme file. So just choose copy raw file. And then back in Home Assistant, go to settings, dashboards, create a new dashboard from scratch. And then you're of course free to name it whatever you want. So I'm just gonna say this is a test dash for video. I think I did that last time too. Open the dashboard, click on the pencil icon, click on the three dots and choose raw configuration editor. And then delete these two lines up here. You're not gonna need them. And then paste in the code that you just got from GitHub. And then make sure it all got pasted in. As you can see, mine currently has 4,976 lines of code. So just make sure you got all of the code in there. And then once you verify that you pasted everything in, choose save right up here at the top and then exit the raw config editor. All right, now comes the fun part, replacing all of my entities with your guys' entities. So again, I went over this in the last dashboard video that I did, but basically because my entities are not the same as your entities, your dashboard is gonna be freaking out with all kinds of errors. Obviously, mine looks correct because it found all of my entities on, well, my home assistant instance, but obviously, again, my entities are not the same as yours, so your dashboard is not going to look anything like this at first. So what you're going to want to do for each of the cards that has an error on it, choose the edit button down here. And then for each of the cards that has an error, for example, this one right here, you can find the card inside of the card configuration. And for example, this light entity does not exist on my instance. Let's go and replace it with the actual correct one. You can see that is the correct entity right there. So I can just choose enter. And as you can see, the card is now functioning and ready for us to use. So the same concept is gonna apply for pretty much everything inside of this dashboard. Just make sure that you've replaced all my entities with your entities. Otherwise, nothing's gonna work. Also, you do need to make sure that you switch all of the entities inside of the JavaScript templates and the Jinja templates as well. So for example, on this media card, you can see we have the main entity key right up here, but then we also have a couple of entity specifications down here that specify the HomePod in my bedroom. Now, if you have a media player called Bedroom HomePod, you should be good to go, but if you don't, then you're gonna need to replace all of these entries with the correct entity. Well, hello there, it's me from the future, and while editing this video, I realized I forgot to mention something kind of important. So if we come into Home Assistant here, you guys can see that we have a custom element doesn't exist error right up there. And all this means is that you're just missing a custom card or custom component in hacks. So for example, if you see a custom element doesn't exist error that says custom element doesn't exist button card, you wanna make sure you have button card installed. That's basically all you're gonna need to do for these kinds of errors. Just make sure you have all the required custom components installed. You can see the full list of custom components that you're gonna need to install in the GitHub repository. So just make sure you have all of these installed and you should be good to go and you won't be seeing any of those errors. All right, back to the main video. So yeah, just try not to freak out and 
hopefully it shouldn't be too bad to get this working on your guys' home assistant instance. And yeah, that's just about it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content from me. Otherwise, that's about it for this video, and I'll see y'all next time.